It's the James Bond Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger by Corgi. There is one toy. I'm just going to take this jacket off because it's too rustly. It's freezing in here. The James Bond Aston Martin DB5 by Corgi is the greatest TV and film related toy of all time. There is one toy in the shopper museum that I have more versions of than any other toy. I've got boxes full of them. I've got Hot Wheels ones. I've got big ones. I've got tiny ones. I've got knockoff ones and toy ones. I have a new one. I've got magazine ones. I've got ones with fancy boxes. I've got the one I played with as a kid. I've got 50th anniversary ones. I've got older ones and even, that was the wrong way around. I've got older ones and even older ones. In the back, I have a massive one that I've not even built yet. I even have a gold one. But then a couple of weeks ago, we had a delivery and it was this. And I've been putting off opening it now for quite some time. And I'm not really sure why. And I think because the original is such a classic, because it is such a brilliant toy, I don't want this to be rubbish and not just a reissue of one of the ones I showed you earlier. The thing is, I can't put off opening it any longer, but if it's not as good as that car, then I'm gonna be devastated. So let's take a look. Please be good, please be good, please be good, please be good, please be good. Please be good. Hang on a second, that's a traffic warden. <laughs> right, now I can, I didn't get a ticket. Right, now finally I can see if Corgi have done at least a half decent job of remaking the best TV and film related toy of all time. It is, it absolutely is. And I'll prove it in the next video, I promise you. Right, first initial out the box. So, first impressions out of the box. It's a little bit bigger than the original. I'm going to say it's not as refined as the original. The artwork's not as good. The text isn't as good. But is the toy as good? That's what's important. Right, here goes. I'm hoping this isn't a case of don't meet your heroes. You've got... So they've made the box bigger and then put a piece of card in the end to stop it rattling around, which is a stupid idea. So you can see in there, if I slide that out, you see straight out of the box, can you see all that's crushed? And that's not been tucked in right. And it's not, it's not fixed at the back. It's not great that, is it? I tell you what, I don't know if you can focus on that. But I don't think the wheels are as nice. I mean, these are shiny, but those are really old. The paint works great on it though. Now then, in the old one, in here, in this bit that I've lost. Well, it's upstairs somewhere, I don't know. We don't put them out with the toys because they tend to go like that and they don't look great on display and you have to bend them, which we don't like. So I've got it somewhere anyway. So I'm just gonna open that up. Now with the old secret instructions, that was like a tissue paper packet that was really nice. You got a fabric sticker, now you get a vinyl sticker. Is there a spare man? There's no spare man. Oh no, he's in there, he's in there, he's in there. There he is. And even he's a little bit, go on, focus, you stupid thing. Even the man's a little bit pasty and not as well made as the original, which is a shame. I mean, it should be better, really, not worse. I know I sound like I'm nitpicking. I'm not happy with the state of that box either. I can actually take this out. Let's get rid of that. have a look at that so you only get the one guy which is a bit cheap now we have got revolving number plates which Corgi didn't do until the next issue of this one which was 270 and they put screws in it instead of rivets now that revolving number plates ruined the front of it right I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this closer to show you this is my super so this is my super nitpicky review of the new James Bond Aston Martin DB5, the Goldfinger version, which is a reissue of this. This is the original. It's got a really chunky front and they've had to do that to get the revolving number plate in. And you've got that god awful bit at the front there with the screw in. 
and then that must have been where the old rivet plate must have been. So they've had to adapt the casting. And I wonder if this is the 50th anniversary casting that they've just reused. It's completely, it's bigger than that one. It's a lot bigger. The paintwork is nice, but it's not the same. It's not gold. It's kind of a weird mustard. Let's do the, yeah, that doesn't work. That works. They work. So why doesn't, oh, right, okay, we've got it to work, so. I mean, that's nice and shiny, whereas the old one was just a piece of plain metal. But I think, again, I think that one looks better. Why have they not done it an exact replica? Why have they not done an exact copy? And I know this isn't an exact copy because, and this is going to sound really nerdy, this isn't a DB5. And I'll explain that in the next video. But it only has, if you look there, there's a tiny mark, which, there. Shut that door. Now, you can see there's a tiny mark there, which is the petrol flap. And um, the DB5 had two petrol tanks. Whereas the DB4 only had one petrol tank. So this is not an accurate remake. Well, it's not because we put revolving number plates on, but I do quite like that as a touch. I think the wheels are terrible compared to the old ones, even though they're shiny. Those are spoke. There's a lot more detail in them. The little man's crap compared to the original man. The paint colour's wrong. The front's probably right, actually. The front's probably more accurate. The back is too. Right, super nitpicky review over. If I got that as a toy, I would be absolutely made up. It's fantastic. But thankfully, thank you, Corgi, it is not as good as the original. So this is still the greatest TV and film related toy of all times, which I'm going to explain to you. It absolutely is. But this is a good effort. It's an 8 out of 10. Could do better. I mean, that shouldn't happen to a brand new box, should it? The other one's like 40 years, 50 years old, 50, 55, 65, 70. The other box is 56 years old and that survived. Sign of the times, modern stuff is rubbish and old stuff is better. This is the second one I've opened and the box is even worse. Why? It's coming away here, which I'm not going to force, but it's ripping it just not good enough. I mean the packaging on the new No Time to Die cars was fantastic. Why is this so rubbish? And why doesn't the model fit in the box? It's too big. Right, I'm going to stop complaining. This is a brilliant toy, go and buy it. Now just for transparency I would like to say that we are a Corgi retailer and we will be selling these things as soon as they come into stock. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an affiliate link in the description below if you would like to go and buy one. Now I know I've been particularly picky over the details and I'm gonna say this is not as good as the 60s original, but then again, it shouldn't be, should it? It's still a very, very, very good toy. And it's the best version they've done as a reissue in a long time. So I would say if you're a Bond fan, you have to buy one, even though I'm selling them.